Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn and I run the services around medcomsnetworking.com. Uh, basically, I'm providing services, um, activity, information for uh, people who work in and around the global medcoms community, by which I mean medical communications, medical education, medical publishing. Uh, you'll find there's an array of services, uh, that website and other associated websites. Uh, what we're doing at the moment is running uh, regular Zoom meetings, which is a great way of reaching out um, to a lot more people. Um, uh, who can't necessarily come to a sort of a real world meeting, as it were? Uh, people can dial in, watch the uh, watch the webinar from wherever they are. Um, we'll have a good discussion for an hour or so, and then we will go back to work. Um, and if all goes well, um, the video recording will then be posted on Network Pharma TV, which is now becoming a really quite useful resource. There's more than 200 videos there, so do go and have a look at that um, and see what else is there. Uh, today, absolutely delighted to have Robin Phil from Envision, um, and we're going to talk about um, leadership development, basically. Um, so without further uh, nonsense from me, I'm basically going to ask Rob to pick this up, introduce himself, uh, do a little presentation. Phil's going to say a few words, and then we've got a Q&A. Um, so Rob, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm sharing my screen now, Peter. Okay, let me just pop that on. All right then, so hopefully you should be looking at uh, the slide saying Envisionary Leadership Medcoms Networking Webinar 12th of February, is that right? Excellent, wonderful. Well, thank you again, Peter, um, for inviting um, us on, onto this webinar. Uh, my name's Rob Harris. I'm the Global um, Talent Development Lead at Envision Pharma Group, um, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Phil Matthews, as well, uh, who can introduce himself in a moment. Uh, and yeah, we're from Envision Pharma Group, which is a, a technology-enabled scientific communications company uh, that um, basically does uh, medical communications work, but also has uh, technology solutions that helps people to um, plan, track, and, and manage their, their um, medical communications work around uh, pharma clients, around their products. Um, we're in uh, several locations across the UK, the US, uh, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've been going since about 2001. So uh, Peter just said, yeah, give, give everybody a bit of a, a, a roundup about um, Envision, which hopefully um, I've managed to do. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm the global talent development leader in Vision. I sit in the HR department and um, I basically have sort of three areas of responsibility, um, all to do with ensuring that um, our Envision team members have the skills they need to be successful in their roles. So the first is um, uh, partially what we're talking about today. So anything that's kind of like universally relevant for people in their workplace interactions. So um, what people might call sort of soft skills or we call them core skills uh, to help people to really be able to interact and you know work with their teammates um, but also that um, you know moving on to the leadership and, and management aspect of that which we'll be talking about today we uh, the L&D team also um, lead on well performance management we have a slightly different name which I'll come to a bit later on um, uh, and increasingly that moving into the sort of work planning areas as well so where we can efficiently contribute to the um, success of the business and then we also have a, a sort of a support role um, providing instructional design support to our technical teams who develop their own um, internal training or who are looking for specialist training for their uh, for their people so they either develop that internally or look for it externally and we can kind of support um, with that in terms of uh, making sure that it's um, targeting the right people with the right things but also um, quality assuring anything that's delivered um, and that's me in a nutshell Phil do you want to um, introduce yourself Sure, thank you. Um, so my name is Phil Matthews. I'm a uh, portfolio director and scientific team lead at Envision. Uh, the scientific team lead is actually the bit we're talking about today, which is the, uh, the management section. So that basically just says that I manage people. Um, I've been in Medcoms, I think, for about 18 years now. And of that time, I think I started to formally manage people about eight years ago. And before that, I was managing uh, teams in terms of deliverables. So, um, had quite a bit of experience and also I think um, also working with various other agencies, some, some really big agencies um, and before I came to, um, in, uh, to Envision about um, two years ago. All right, well thank you and thanks for being uh, my wingman on this. 
Um, and this, which is, uh, I, I want to give you um, an overview of um, what we call our Envisionary Leadership Program, which is really our approach to um, providing leadership and management training to, uh, to well, leaders and managers across our whole business. Um, and really, that's to ensure um, that our leader managers have the skills that they need to be successful in their role, but also so that they can contribute to the ongoing success of the business, because um, you know it's a key, it's a key aspect of everything we do. So um, broadly, I'm going to sort of describe where we're coming from with this. Um, you know what our um, our approach is to leadership. Um, the, what our idea of leadership is, um, and uh, our rationale for doing this kind of training. And then I'm going to sort of try and describe roughly what we do um, and, and how we do it um, as a way to then hand over to Phil, who um, has um, taken part in this initiative. And, and hopefully he'll be able to give everybody a bit of um, insight into um, what it really means uh, on a day to day basis, which I'm, I'm, I'm hoping is going to be positive. Phil, please. Um, Okay, so first of all, what is our overall philosophy? That's kind of a grand word, really, for um, the rationale for doing leadership management training at Envision um, and also the objective for that. In terms of rationale, this is really about recognizing there's a definite shift when people uh, move from being a specialist contributor to um, somebody that has a responsibility for um, uh, uh, individuals or teams. Um, and with this shift, there's a definite um, uh, set of skills that are required. Now, these may or may not be in place at this point, but um, uh, we're really aware that if they aren't in place, then you know there can be detrimental effect. And if they are in place, then actually there can be a great um, benefit of that. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, we're, we're trying to do, really. We're trying to replicate what does work um, and then try and um, look at areas um, that um, might require improvement and certainly in context. Our sort of stated objective for our leadership program is less about making effective managers, although that's obviously quite important, but it's more about ensuring that every envisionary team member has a standard experience of being managed. Um, and I think that goes part of the way to recognize that the managers in our in our business have many of them have been managers for a long time. And so they have um, a good experience of being a manager. So there's a varied experience of management across the business. Um, so what we want to do is, yeah, kind of use that really, find out what works, uh, encourage people to come along to this uh, this training um, and share um, and, and then look to replicate what works and then maybe have a look at um, potentially new ways of doing things. Another really important thing to mention is that this is all in context, it's in, in the, the Envision context. And I say that because when we were thinking about it, we could have easily just put everybody on to, you know, a kind of a Harvard Business School or a Henley Business School um, uh, standard management course. But we really wanted it to be about Envision um, and, and about the experiences of, of Envisionary team members. And I think a really good um, example of a recognition of that is many, certainly on the, the scientific services side of our business, many people have come to us from um, an academic or a, a sort of a scientific research um, background. And, and sort of uh, these are different institutions and now they're working in, in a business. And so there's a real recognition that we need to take that into account um, and, and consider that when, when indeed we are working together and, uh, and certainly when these specialist contributors um, uh, have become leaders or managers. And in terms of the need, I joined Envision in 2017, at which point there was no centrally um, offered uh, training. Uh, people were doing training, but they were doing it slightly differently and in, in different ways. Um, but, um, you know, Envision continues uh, to enjoy a period of growth uh, and, and decentralization. Um, and, and so really, we wanted to kind of put our arms around that. And, and like I say, to that objective, make sure that everybody was having a similar experience. Okay, because we really think that that's where success lies. In terms of our approach, it was very much a consultative one. So we kicked it all off by doing a company-wide survey, which really just asked some basic questions. What is leadership? What is management? What is the difference between the two, if indeed there is a difference? Um, and, and what does the company need from its leaders and managers? Um, and that was really well um, 
uh, really well um, answered. There was a lot of uh, response, which is great. We then use that as the basis for um, senior executive level consultations. So we took them all away for a couple of days to really nail the, the, the question, what is leadership and uh, management in Envision? What, it should, what should it be? So that we could come up with um, a, a list of sort of skills, attributes, behaviors um, that kind of nicely encapsulated what we wanted um, and what was appropriate for Envision at this particular point in time. Um, and that was, again, really great. A lot of really good uh, insight there that was really helping us to, to make sure that it was contextually specific. Um, and then from there, we, we looked to kind of bring in various, um, you know, popular established uh, um, uh, and standard models for leadership and management, but kind of work them around and, and try and apply them in context, really, so, um, so that we could highlight what was really working um, and then look at the areas that might require some improvement and, and give people options for doing that. So you can see on the screen, um, this is one of the, the quotes that we got from the consultation that we did company-wide. Um, a good leader helps us to get through difficult and challenging tasks and deadlines and feel good that we helped accomplish the goals, which we, I, I, I really like. I think that's a good one. Another one, um, in my opinion, the primary goals of management are to support and develop talent to problem solve and to optimize working relationships. And I think the point here is that whether or not we agree with that, that was what the company was telling us. And, and so what we needed to do was try and respond to that um, in the most in, a, appropriate way, really. Um, and, and we did. And, and what we've done is we've created a, a program for leadership and management. We've, we've sort of packaged that into um, or two or, or sort of three levels with um, the recognition that we wanted um, it not only to cover a lot of stuff, so comprehensively, you can do all of this in a one-day training course, um, but also to sort of promote and facilitate the idea of continuous improvement. So the training is just the beginning of a, of a journey. This, um, we talk about the leadership turns that specialist contributor to a, um, a leader manager and beyond. And so we really wanted people to consider what do they need now, but what might they need in the future? And really the whole thing is focused on the relationship between a leader manager and the people that they lead or manage really so it's you know it's very much relationship focused and it has its roots in um the company values which is the ones that you can see on screen at the moment which um really do kind of promote a a shared and, and democratic approach to deciding you know, what needs to be done, what, what are the priorities, who's best place to do it, and, and therefore what should everybody be aiming towards. Um, and much of the training refers to um, a kind of a central tool for um, management here, which um, in other companies, you'd recognize it as performance management, um, but we call it Envision Contribution Planning. Um, which is essentially a kind of a, a discussion and an agreement between a, a leader manager and the people that they're managing um, on what us as team members um, can and should contribute within a, in a time period. And that's not just what work are we going to do, but how are we going to do that? And so, you know, how are we going to behave? How are we going to relate to our other team members um, when doing that? Um, and that all, you know, sort of comes back down to this, um, these Envision values. So in, in our Envision contribution planning process, we talk about the what, which is work output, but also the how, which is the extent to which um, we uh, exhibit or embody these values um, and that's gone down really well I think it's you know it really does it is in keeping with the way that people um, work and, and want to work with others in this company um, and the you know there's the basic premise that in that relationship then our leader managers are enablers of work rather than directors of work um, and a lot of that came out in the in the early discussions but the training itself um, kicks off with a very simple question, which is, who is your best boss and why? Because really, that's all we're asking people to do. We, we want people to think, who was it who encouraged me to do the most I could do to be the best I could be? Um, and when they can recognize that and, they, and they've got that in their mind, then we're just asking them to simply replicate that. Because if it's worked for them, you know, they've made that turn from specialist contributor to a leader manager. So they must be doing something right. And, uh, you know, if they consider how they got there and the kind of support they got from their leaders, um, 
then it's probably a good idea for them to try and replicate that as well um, to be that person. So that always um, is a good way of starting off. I think it, it kind of puts people at ease and, and sort of demystifies this whole idea of leadership and management training, which can be a bit, um, can be a bit scary at times. So it builds from there then, basically. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we try and parcel it up into uh, certainly kind of two levels of training at the moment. Um, and, it, and it does begin with that question, which is what is envisionary leadership? What does Envision expect of you as leaders? And you know, what, what do you think is good leadership? Um, and then it sort of moves on to uh, you know, putting that into our individual context. And so uh, we talk about self-awareness as a leader because if this is about the relationship between you and somebody else then personality uh, needs to be um, taken into account you know we are all different um, our brains are wired in different ways um, and just because we do something or go about something in one way uh, doesn't mean to say that the other people that we work with do um, the same thing uh, and so we need to be able to recognize that and, and essentially that's we kind of consider that as leading ourselves we need to understand how we work um, and how other people work in order to be able to develop um, uh, you know these good fruitful relationships and then it moves on to uh, this idea that you are now leading others individuals and actually within the everyday um, sort of working environment you'll be working with different people on different tasks who require different forms of leadership different leadership styles to um to use the um the terminology of one of the, the models that we we look at um and it's that appreciation that um it isn't just one size fits all that you you do actually need to consider exactly what you're asking people to do and and you know how able and willing they are to do that to be um this effective enabler of their work so that's very much the foundation level and we we offer that to everybody who um has a direct report Okay. Um, like I said, not to tell them that they're doing it wrong, but really to kind of, um, sort of bring in some, some more ideas and, and, and help people uh, consider those. We've, um, we're entering our third year of doing that now. We've, done, we've offered the training to around 250 people and um, we have a pretty good satisfaction rate. So 95% plus of people saying that they feel more confident in their role as a manager um, as a result of the training that they've completed. And then, um, Last year, we started uh, what we call our next level of, uh, of leadership and management training. And this is really, um, again, sort of recognizes another of those leadership turns from being the leader of individuals, or leader of others, to being the leader of groups of people. And so, um, you know, uh, maybe as you go up that chain a little bit more, you might be um, leading teams or, um, or leading significant functions. And then there's another layer of things that you need to consider around that. And again, we bring in, um, you know, fairly established, um, well-known leadership models, management um, tools and techniques, but we apply that in the, in the context, in the, in the group context. And so where the um, foundation level training is, is quite didactic, um, it, it presents a lot of models and then offers uh, case studies and role plays for people to, to work through. At this next level, it's much more um, focused on group discussion um, about uh, these leaders talking about their experiences and being able to offer feedback or, or peer coaching to, to their peers, really. Um, and, and we find that that really works because people talk about, you know, real and, and current examples of, of um, leadership and management. But then something that we're launching um, this year, I say launch, that's quite grand, but we will be segueing into this year is a, a recognition that there's there's more beyond that as well and so um there's more leadership turns uh, the longer you're in a leadership position uh, potentially the, the higher up you are the more specific your needs become and so uh the ability to respond to that in a, a sort of a training environment um it becomes more limited and instead we want to um take a much more sort of individualized um, approach through formal um, personal and professional development planning um, uh, during which you know our leader managers at this level will be able to articulate specifically what they need um, and we would be able to respond in a much more um, sort of um, targeted and focused way it, it would still um, involve probably group discussions and, and sort of networking but again it is probably going to bring in um, uh, you know more targeted stuff um, executive level coaching um, specialist networks and, and, and maybe links to uh, you know other other external training courses um, 
but yeah, so that's that's coming in in 2020. In terms of the next level, we we did that last year, and we've run about 40 people through there, again with similar satisfaction rates. I mean, it's, uh, I think one of the things that really comes out every time is this is great. I get to discuss this with people, uh, you know, in a in a in a in a sort of a consequence-free environment, and I get to network with with um, like-minded people, and that's that's really been um, uh, helpful, I believe. And so finally, then, before um, we sort of hand over to Phil to tell us about his experiences, I just wanted to flag the kind of formats of uh, of learning, the formats of training that we that we um, that we employ. And this is really to recognize that we are increasingly dispersed uh, and we are increasingly busy, which means that um, it's hard to get people in a room for you know a day long training course and so we take a blended learning approach and for those of you who are familiar to the learning and development world that's uh, something that you would have heard of before but essentially it just means trying to mix your formats as much as possible so that you can bring the learning to people in the most accessible ways um, so mixing online training with um, uh, with didactic classroom training um, discussions etc so on this um, slide, it's really just recognizing that we use online learning resources. We have a, a, a learning management system so we can provide people with kind of prep work um, short videos that they can begin to engage with what they're going to be talking about and also follow up as well. So anything they need to revise or refresh or stuff that we've already talked about. We do do um, didactic classroom training but really only on the early on because we recognize that people just want to get into it really um, and so take a lot of group discussions or idea of social learning and promoting networks of best practice all the way up to as I, as I mentioned previously in these next levels the idea that um, people need to be able to come up with what they need um, you know to be able to articulate their specific requirements for leadership management support so that we can then um, respond in a more individual way. So that's, um, yeah, that's pretty much the overview. Hopefully that was useful. Um, and now, yeah, to my um, esteemed colleague, Phil, will tell you how much of that makes sense in the, in the real world. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, so I, I think probably what I would say is, um, you know, as I said, I joined the company about two years ago. And I think this was, as, well, as you were um, getting to roll this out as I, as I joined, I think it was probably uh, good timing. Um, is it, was that right? About that time, right? Yeah, about that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um, so it was actually quite interesting because I come from a company which, uh, with a large company, a very large company with um, an established training um, going on and, and then moving into this company where actually the company itself had gone from, uh, you know, very small, uh, 15, uh, 18 years ago to now being uh, quite a large company. And so Rob was kind of bringing that in um, and whereas I'd come from a bigger company, I'd come into a smaller company, a mid-sized company, and actually finding that it was, from my perspective, actually what I got on that training course was, um, was really helpful, really useful, and, and also uh, was um, you know, a, a similar, should we say, a similar level and similar understanding that I got from the previous companies as well, so that was really quite nice. And uh, one of the things I would say is, uh, one of the differences probably about Envision is the, um, some of the uh, company values. Um, obviously, we, we've seen company values. Uh, every, every company has them. Uh, the ones I like about Envision is that, like humility, just to pick out one. And that's quite an unusual one, I think, to have as a, a medical company, um, having humility as uh, one of their values. But I think um, that really is the case here in that it, it really means that people are, are very approachable. Um, that they, uh, they're always looking to learn things, um, uh, not just to dictate, but obviously to learn things from their uh, colleagues, um, more junior colleagues who quite often have, um, you know, uh, fantastic experiences that they can bring. And so it's that two-way um, conversation, and, uh, and I think that's essential to, um, to good management. And uh, I, th I think that's, you know, what we, what we do with the, with the training programme. And then the other thing I would say about the training program is actually quite nice to have uh, a full day where you can actually, you know, uh, take some time away from your normal day job to um, to have, think about uh, how you manage and um, uh, management techniques. And also, it's really nice to talk to your colleagues uh, who have experiences and to just kind of uh, fire. Uh, I think we did some role play, which is always always good fun, and just to have, have some thinking about different ways you could do things um, and just you know just to try things in a, in a day where. Um, you, you don't normally do that uh, day in, day out. So uh, that was nice as well. Brilliant.
and and I guess the burning question is: Have have you been able to implement what you have learned um, in the everyday, and, and and to what extent has that been successful? Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, for instance, one of the uh, things we talked about was uh, different styles of management, depending on who you're managing, uh, both their um, abilities and also their personalities. And so you can think about, um, and also the task you're doing. So, for instance, a task could be um, something where that person doesn't have much experience, and so you'd be quite directive in your approach. Um, another person might have a lot of experience there, so you might just be, you know, just coaching them or just leaving them to get on with it, which is, you, you know, just to be there as a consulting uh, presence if they need it, um, depending on, on their experience and, and also, you know, your experience as well. It could, it could be another situation where you're actually managing someone, but they um, actually have much more experience in a particular aspect of the work than you do. Um, and so, again, it's uh, all those different ways of doing it, depending on the situ situation, um, and think about that is quite important. Yeah, no, that's brilliant, and yeah, that absolutely echo echoes the sentiment that you know we're all here working together. Um, just because you're a leader manager doesn't necessarily mean that you are you know the person who knows best. Um, and we really like that sort of consultative approach, like trying to look at the people, what they're doing, and and again enable them to do that. Nice one, Phil. Thank you. Um, I think another thing that we do, um, which I think may be a little bit different, is that um, when we're doing our contribution um, planning, we're actually doing it uh, quite regularly. So we try and actually spend time every six months to uh, set our goals and then to uh, revisit them every six months. Um, obviously, you know, that's in uh, managing that in around um, you know, the, the work we have to do. But uh, it's actually quite nice because um, if you... Well, most people leave it a year and a year can be quite a long time you can go back and look and go oh yeah that, that's completely changed from what i was doing a year ago whereas if you you're actually using the um the uh planning forms as a as, as a tool where you're doing your day-to-day -day work then actually that can really help as well um in order to make sure that you're uh you know contributing as much as you can do super Brilliant, yeah, and that, and that sort of reflects our approach to performance management, which is it's less about the kind of the appraisal um, and retrospective, have you done what you were meant to do, and more about the, well, what is it that we can contribute, what, what's coming up next, and bringing in that kind of work planning element, which again, helps with that, that um, leader manager um, conversation. Excellent. Okay, guys, uh, sorry to jump in. I wasn't quite sure whether to jump in there or not, but uh, what would be quite good now, I think, is if we could go to a sort of a Q&A and see if we can get some of these guys watching us to ask some questions. Um, so do you want me to stop slides, That would be great, yeah. Um, and to those of you listening, um, again, um, just to remind you, you've got a chat button and the Q&A button at the bottom of your windows. Um, so text in your questions, your comments, your observations, and hopefully um, that will help lead some of this discussion. Uh, feel free. Um, can I just ask a, a couple of things? Uh, Rob, uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, sorry, but when you were talking about Envision, um, just give us a sense, how, how, how many people are we talking about? So we've got roughly 700, between 700 and 750 people uh, across uh, 12 offices, um, uh, mainly in the US and the UK, but we're also in um, Serbia and Hungary uh sydney and tokyo as well and so, okay yeah, cool, cool. so you so me i think i think phil says something like about mid-size but you know you've grown a lot in the last couple of years that, that's putting mm -hmm. you at the, the top end of the sort of the, the sort of med comms agency type companies yeah that's um, right i mean that's grown from when i joined we were about 500 so that's yeah i know there's been a lot of growth down there so um might, might or might not be a stupid question but um i, I think because one of the things that i think when i'm listening to this sort of conversation is you know having been in and around medcoms for quite a long time you know it's quite obvious over the last couple of years to me um that the business has matured a lot that a number of the companies are putting in place formalized training programs there's a lot of emphasis on learning development training support all the right sort of all the right words as it were uh, for the staff whereas maybe go back when i started we just got on with the job and just cracked on you know uh, but there's been a lot of maturity a lot of investment and resource in those training programs particularly in the last couple of years in particular companies and particularly like yourselves so um i find what i find a little bit interesting is you've got a very different background to medcoms rob whereas phil you've been mm -hmm. in medcoms for a while so maybe you've both got a comment on this you know um there's always been a bit of a conflict or tension between trainers and trainees it's like we're busy we're busy we can't be trained in an agency environment it can be quite stressful quite difficult and so on i just wonder from your both both your perspectives and, and looking at it within the medcoms environment 
how much of a problem you're finding with that. Um, you know, is it any more or less than any other environment just because you're an agency or, or not? Do you, Rob, you've come in from outside a couple of years ago. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I don't think it's any more... No, I don't think it's any different, really. I think one thing about Envision that definitely struck me when I joined was that it's a learning organization. Everybody was super keen um, to learn what they could, but also to share the knowledge that they've got. And um, I think what, what I was looking at was a transition from a, a smaller company where that's actually quite easy to do because everybody talks to everybody on a daily basis to um, one that had effectively mushroomed and, and dispersed. And so these informal ways of sharing knowledge um, were, were not as efficient as they were. And so, um, yeah, it was my job to just try and work with pockets to be able to uh, grab it um you know package it up and, and make it accessible certainly as an agency as a growing agency people don't have time to do it um and so another kind of aspect of my work is to help people understand that this idea of blended learning there are other ways of being able to get this information in your head um it, it doesn't require you to sit down for a three hour or a five hour training course um and, and so yeah it's it's really it's funny it's not well, i was gonna say ironic but it's not ironic we're a communications company so it's about communicating effectively and efficiently and we do that really well with our clients and, and actually what we need to do is just turn that uh, inside as well and, and do it internally okay but while, while you're doing that they're not they're not being charged out <laughs> nah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's some there's some tension in there i mean phil from your point of view what, what have you got any comment on that and, and over your years in medcoms you know, yeah i mean I, so i think firstly like the, uh, you know, training uh, day as we were talking about um that, that type of thing i think can be very really valuable and i think you actually don't have to do it very often in order for that to have quite an impact on the business right throughout the year. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, as you say, with the blended learning role, that um, you know, we have a lot of um, kind of little courses and things that we can look at. So if there's a particular thing, um, an aspect of management that we want to uh, uh, think about or um, you know, different uh, techniques and ways of doing things or, or any learning, actually, um, there's, there's, we have access to that and we can, um, you know, we know where to go. If we can't find something, then we can go to Bob and ask him, you know, is it, can we look at this? And we're going to be doing more on that this year as well, I think. So um, that's actually really nice because it means that if there's particularly something you want to want to look at, you, you can spend 30 minutes of your day looking at it. And that actually will then make you hopefully a better manager going forward. Um, and you can, uh, you know, that again, can have, have quite an impact without too much time. So, yes, yeah, I mean, we're all really busy. Um, but actually, I think if you use some of the techniques that we've used and some of the resources we've got, I think uh, it can really help. Okay. Okay. I, I, personally, I just think it's a good reflection on the business medcoms that, that there's so much more emphasis now on on developing and supporting people. So I applaud I applaud all of that. And um, just out of interest, maybe it's a stupid question. Apologies um, ahead of myself. Um, but is there a? I mean, again, agencies tend to start very small and then grow. Is there a point at which you know this sort of training becomes you know really important? Um, is there a point at which it's really just not worth worrying about? Is there is there, is there any modelling done that says you know x numbers of people and you certainly ought to be doing this sort of stuff or, or is it just principles should start at day one so i i don't know what i'm asking here exactly I just no 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 i think i kind of get what you what you're going for um and I'd just come back to this idea of context, really. I'm sure there is, you know, best practice uh, uh, out there across the sector and across various different businesses. Um, but, you know, we just wanted to look at ourselves, what we were trying to achieve or what we are trying to achieve as an agency and then and respond appropriately. And like I said, years ago when the company was set up and it was relatively small and everybody was there together, then they could. They should you know, sharing knowledge and, and, and bringing in what they needed. But uh, I, I certainly think rapid expansion um, brings with it a whole different raft of, of, of requirements. And then I think you need, you know, that's when you would bring specialists in. So from an, a learning and development point of view, so well, what has worked, what is the most effective ways of getting this need met? Um, but yeah, I think it's a good question and probably one that many of the, the people on the line were, are probably asking for. Um, I can, all I can say is all the companies that I've ever worked for have had learning development provision and have done management training. So um, it, it seems to be the norm. 
Okay. I think it's ubiquitous in modern economies, basically. Okay, okay. Um, just uh, the, we're talking very much sort of Latin management type training rather than spe sort of hard skill type training here, yeah. Um, but you know, do you bring people in from outside? I mean, we've got a question from Alan about bringing patients in, in, in terms of you know talking about the, I guess, the, the business environment and the ways in which you you manage training projects and so on. Patients is one, you know, subject that a lot of people talk about at the moment. Do you, do you bring in other people? Into this program, and, and is that part of this, or is that something different? In a, you know, dealt with on, under a different title, as it were. Yeah, no, no. I think well, certainly for the patient stuff, that would fall under the technical training remit. And so, if you meant remember what I was saying at the top of the call, um, you know, we lead on these universally relevant stuff, um, and then we support on the technical side of things. But as an as an, a communications agency, we provide training and we design training for our clients. And so, there isn't always a need for me to do that. And I think on the on the you know the the patient stuff, the uh, plain language summaries, etc. Yeah, and that, that's what it's all about. And so that's dealt with over there. Um, you know, if and when anybody wants to talk to me about, you know, what makes for good training, then I'd, then I'd certainly um, seek to um, input. In terms of getting external, um, you know, kind of uh, in, uh, input or thoughts around leadership and management, everything we do is based on people who write those books that you read in airports sometimes and um, we have a, um, um, a leadership and management consultant who um, we certainly brought in and the senior uh, level um, consultations um, yeah to, to sort of recognize that everything there's a specialist for everything and we really should be looking to the, the highest levels of quality to ensure that what we deliver is um, is appropriate and is going to have impact okay um, uh, there's a question from Sheila about in using um, blended e-learning of users suggested improvements and topics blah 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 and um, you know so so what's the feedback loop i mean again i mean do, do, uh, phil i mean as someone going through this uh how much opportunity do you, do you get to go well this could be done differently and so on is there is that the feedback loop going on yeah i think that's right isn't it Robert? um so you've, you've had some e-learning um modules which have been uh you know produced by you to feed out to the organization and also some of the people from the organization have come back and said actually we could really do with something on this um, and then we've been, you know, um, you've been involved from, from that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think our role, certainly the role for modern learning and development is uh, not to be the emanator or the creator of learning resources, but rather to be a curator of the whole internet's worth of stuff that's out there because somebody once said to me it's about helping people to drink from the fire hose um so yeah we have we have a lot of stuff um online that we've created and we've picked it because we talk to the business and we try and respond to their needs um but that's an ongoing conversation so if, if somebody comes to me and goes oh I, I could do with some guidance on subject x then yeah it's it's very much um the l d team's uh role to go and find that or to help them build it um and yeah uh, so there's loads of stuff out there it's just about ensuring that it is appropriate in context and that it is is of high quality so that people get that information quickly it's about the efficient transfer of knowledge and um, so yeah there'll be some good stuff out there that's online and there'll be some really bad stuff out there online and and so we have the the role of um picking and choosing right? and so, and certainly one of the feedback i've had quite a lot or, or i've heard quite a lot talked about um with these sort of softer management skills how you want to describe it um is is the requirement for re uh, sort of relevance and context so you can go on a course somewhere you know about management skills or whatever with a bunch of other people but it's out of the context of medcoms and there's a uh, certainly a lot of people i've talked to over the years have been quite um, keen on the idea of doing those sorts of training programs within the context of the business that we're actually in, which has always made a lot of sense to me. Um, but there aren't, I mean, frankly, there aren't a bunch of courses you can get or you can send people on. So, you know, that's probably partly why it's you know, becoming much more driven internally sort of thing. Um, but um, what about the, the nitty gritty of the blended learning? I'm, I'm always slightly curious about when people talk about blended learning and the sort of online learning and, and what you actually mean and, and to put you on the spot slightly, because I see sort of e-learning, which is like, a, you know, go and look at those PowerPoints or something or, or go and watch a video or, or through to go and experience a whole multimedia thing sort of thing. And, and, and in a company like Envision, maybe it's, interesting to speculate a little bit but you're probably doing some online learning projects for clients where there's a reasonably 
big budget behind it and whatever. And then it's like, yeah, but you know, hourly learning for our team is in PowerPoint with an audio. I just, again, a little bit of context here, a little bit of explanation of what people, particularly on the e-learning side maybe, would actually see and experience. Sure, yeah. I mean, blended learning is definitely uh, yeah, a term <laughs> that gets bandied around a little bit. I mean, I always try to, think to bring things back to basics um, and it's um, people may have heard of this 70 20 10 principle which says that 70% of what we learn we actually learn just by doing it 20% um, of what we learn we learn through our interactions with others and actually only 10% of what we learn and um, we learn through formal structured training courses um, and, and actually I don't think there's any science behind that I think that's just generally this is what people have thought and recognized um, and um, and so blended learning is that it's just saying that you you don't have to wait until there's a training course to be able to gain this knowledge. There are different ways of you um, getting it. And that could be sitting next to somebody and asking them and watching what they're doing and then trying it out. Um, or it could be watching a short video on your learning management system that's going to give you a few pointers. And then you go and, um, you know, start an assignment based on that and learn as you, as you go along. Or it might be that actually your needs are so specialist that you probably need some further education and you're going to go out and do a master's of business administration or a, a higher level um, certificate in something. And so, yeah, that, that's what we understand as being blended learning. What is the most efficient way of getting this stuff across? And, and they say blended because it's probably not going to just be one. You're probably going to need a few of them. Uh, and the other thing to respond to your idea about e-learning, we talk about online learning as using computers to help people to learn. And, and that can be anything from emailing them a PDF to having a nice all singing, all dancing, uh, interactive e-learning resource on a learning management system that's got drag and drop functionality and stuff like that, and anything in between. Um, but again, it just recognizes that we don't all sit together in the same room anymore. And most of the time we sit in front of a computer and the internet is a wonderful resource. And so we should be learning, we should be using it as um, effectively as possible. Okay. Um... There's a quick question that's come in here, but um, we might as well pick up that question before my question. Michael's asked, how do you adapt to your, your staff in different locations? Are there cultural nuances to be mindful and so on? Um, you know, you're a global business. How, how big a challenge is that? Um, I'm going to fling that over to Phil just in case he has uh, members on his team that are remote. But remote working is definitely a, a, a consideration. Yeah, I mean, I've um, been... I spent 10 years actually working totally remotely um, with companies and then uh, and now I work uh, um, part-time in the office, part-time at home. And as you said, we also have many uh, uh, locations in the US, UK and Australia. So um, certainly I think, I think they say no, med medcoms, I think that everybody is working across um, across uh, you know um, locations geographically and that also means that quite often you'll be managing people that aren't in your location and I, I think actually that it's um, I think people are getting really quite used to it now so it doesn't really seem to be uh, you know a, a difficulty there it's nice to meet people face to face at least once in a while but um, it's not essential but nice if you can do that and I think it's just again it depends on the relationship you took the person that you're managing uh, the the way it works best. What I like to do with the people that I'm line managing is to have a quick catch up with them uh, once a week and then you know some longer term uh, discussions uh, you know, less regularly than that. Um, but a, a quick check in once a week just to see how they're doing and what they got off the week. Things like that. Just really easy. Um, either on, on the phone, um, you can use video. I don't generally use video but I think you know, people are using that more and more so again if people want to use video that's absolutely fine. And uh, I think that's um, yeah, it, it seems to be there's a lot of ways of doing it these days, and I think that's that works well. Okay, um, I'm going to skip my question to us. I've got. I'm sorry, I've got an eye on the clock, and we've gone a little bit over what I was hoping to do. So, um, I'm going to, if if you don't mind, I'm going to draw the conversation or the recorded part of the conversation to a halt there, um, and um, and say a big thank you to to Rob and Bill. Part of the idea, well, I, my idea anyway, behind these sorts of meetings and then the video that will go up is that um, we give people food for thought, and teams can sit out there in in Medcom's land and listen to what you're saying, and then think about how that affects their own business and working pattern and their own thoughts and so on. And I think there's quite a lot in there that people ought to be able to um, sit and think about. So huge thank you to Rob and Phil. What I will say to everybody listening and watching and uh, wherever, um, Rob and Phil are very happy to hear from you on LinkedIn. So, uh, you know, do reach out and say hello. Um, but for just for the moment, I'm just going to say a big thank you to everybody um, 
for listening, to Rob and Phil for, for being on the panel. Uh, to those of you listening at the moment, live as it were, don't run away because we're happy to keep on talking. But the recording is going to stop and I'm just going to ask everybody, as I always do now, to give a bit of wave, say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>